Elden Ring in Japanese. So it's finally upon us, the release of Elden Ring, the open world Dark Souls game. It looks absolutely incredible. And in this video, we're gonna go through some of the essential language that you need to know in order to be able to play the game in Japanese yourself. So like a lot of other Dark Souls games, except for Demon Souls for the PS5 and the DLC for Bloodborne, Dark Souls games unfortunately are not dubbed in Japanese. So if you choose to play this game in Japanese, you will only have the English dub. However, you will have Japanese text uh, throughout the game if you can get a Japanese copy. And why this is useful is a lot of the speech in Elden Ring is quite fantasy speech, quite difficult language. So if you can see it in your native language in English first, and then you can see it used in Japanese, it can help you learn some of this more difficult language. And also serves as a really nice way of just picking up some Japanese while you enjoy Elden Ring. Foul tarnished. In search of the Elden Ring. So as far as the essential language that you need to know in order to play Elden Ring, the first word we have here is Asebito. And this is the Japanese word for the tarnished. <laughs> this is what you're referred to as in the game. Uh, you are the tarnished. And so here we can see in Japanese, Asebito. Now, this is quite a rare word. Um, I've seen many places on the internet, Japanese people themselves not knowing how to read this word. So as we can see, starting off with a bit of fantasy speech. And here, this use of Aseru is actually to fade, to diminish. So a diminished person, right? the tarnished. Another pretty difficult word here is the word in Japanese, or at least in the Dark Soul games, for your class. So in Elden Ring, you actually are able to select some classes to play. In the public uh, beta test demo thing they had, um, there was only five classes that you could choose from. But this word right here, this is how to say class in Japanese uh, in Elden Ring. So we can see this quite strange looking word, sujo. And this is referring to one's class identity, um, their origin. And that's where this word comes from. In a lot of games, they won't use this word to refer to the class, but in Dark Souls games in particular, this word is a really important word that can help you in any Dark Souls game. So if we go through the five classes that were introduced, there will be more coming later, but right now these are the ones that we know. So the first one here we can see is Kenshi. So this is a warrior. And so this word is made up of two different kanji. The first, ken, for a sword, and then she here for a kind of warrior. So you could look at this as kind of a swordsman. And so this character, as the name implies, is the warrior that uses swords, right? So your main thing is using swords, the swordsman or the warrior. This next class here, or sujo here, we have is the enchanted knight. And so this in Japanese, as we can see here, is majutsu kishi. So the first half here, majutsu, that actually means magic. And this is a really useful word. If you want to know what magic means in Japanese, this is the word for you to know. And then we have kishi. So this is the knight. This is a really useful word in fantasy games. Uh, if you think Game of Thrones, where you have the knights of the realm and things like that, that here is kishi. It's a very common word. So a magical Kishi, a magical knight. And so we can see here the literal translation is a magical knight, or in the game translation we can see the enchanted knight. The next class we have here is quite different from the first two, and this is Yogensha, a prophet. So the first word here is Yogen, this is a prophet. And then the final kanji, this Sha, or also read as Mono, this is a person. So a person who sees prophecies is a prophet. And this class is quite different from the others where he uses this prayer system um, to use some of his attacks. A very interesting playstyle. The next class we have here is Yusha. And this in Japanese is the word for a hero. However, in the English version, they have called it a champion. This is a super common word if you play uh, any kind of fantasy game. This is actually how you're referred to as in the Dragon Quest games. So a super useful word here, Yusha, for a hero or as the champion. One of the coolest looking classes here uh, in Elden Ring here is the Bloody Wolf. And so we can see here the word is Okami no Senki. So the first part here before the not particle is Okami, and that is the wolf. So that's the kanji there for a wolf. And then the last part, Senki, is a combination of battle, sen, and ki for a demon. So it's kind of like the battle demon wolf, <laughs> if you think about it uh, literally, if you put it all together. But in the English translation, they've called it the bloody wolf. 
but you can see it has this feeling of like a wolf that's a demon on the battlefield, that kind of thing. And so they're the five classes that were introduced in the network test. Uh, that was the one time people have been able to have played it so far. And so in Elden Ring, quite similar to other Dark Souls games, your class determines what your starting stats are and some of the equipment that you get that you can later change as you progress through the game. But this is how you start off. Emboldened by the flame of ambition. And so as you level up your class, Reberu, here the Japanese for level, as you level up your classes, you can put points into different stats and this will improve your gameplay in certain ways. And so these are really important pieces of language for you to know in Japanese if you want to play in Japanese because it's probably not going to be voice acted uh, in English telling you what they are because it's kind of a menu thing. Not only that, but this also helps you for any other Dark Souls, Demon Souls, Bloodborne type game um, because they often use quite similar stats. So if we have a look at the first one here, we have Seimei Ryoku. And so how high your Seimei Ryoku is determines how much health you have as well as fire and poison resistance. And so out of the five starters that gives you the most Seimeiryoku, your vigor, right, this is the Bloody Wolf. So as we can see, the Bloody Wolf here has a little bit of a bonus with their vigor, their Seimeiryoku. The next stat we have here is a little bit similar sounding. This is Seishinryoku. Now we can see that the kanji are a little bit different, but it does sound a little bit similar to the previous word. So seishin ryoku here, seishin is your mentality and then ryoku is your power. So your mental power, here in English seen as just mind. And the mind stat, the seishin ryoku here, improves your FP, your focus points. And so focus points are used whenever you cast magic and spells. And so the prophet, Yogensha here, the one that they get the boost for here is the Seishin Ryoku. The next stat we have here is Jikyu Ryoku. So Jikyu Ryoku here is the endurance or your kind of stamina. And so this is the stat that you want to boost to have more of stamina, endurance. And so whenever you attack, run, block, it uses some of your Jikyu Ryoku, some of your endurance. And the class that has the most Jikyu Ryoku at the beginning is the warrior. Kenshi. Then we have Kin Ryoku. So this is strength. So Kin is kind of your muscles and then Ryoku as we know is your power. So this is your muscle power, right? Your strength. And if you have lots of these points, this allows you to wield heavy weapons as well as increase your inventory load and it increases the strength of your abilities. So a very, very useful stat here. And the class that starts off with the most of this is the Bloody Wolf, or Kami no Senki. This next stat's a little bit different from the other ones. Here we have Gidio, and this means the dexterity. Gi here is, as we actually learned in the Pokemon video, your waza, right, your, uh, your technique. And then Ryo is an amount, so the amount of your technique, your technical ability, your dexterity. Now, this is used in a bunch of different ways in Elden Ring. You can use dexterity here to wield advanced armaments, boost your attack power of dexterity scaling weapons, reduce your cast time, soften fall damage, make it harder for you to fall off your horse, and lots of other things. This is quite a useful stat point. And so the class that starts off with the most of this Gideon here is the warrior, Kenshi. And so you can see here that the warrior, the Kenshi, has a lot of endurance, the Jikyu Ryoku, and the Gideon, the dexterity. The next stat we have here is Chiryoku. And this is a combination of Chi here for wisdom, mind, knowing something, and then Ryoku here for your power. So your intelligence, how much you have power of knowing something. This is used to boost your magic and sorcery and things like that, as well as your magical defense. And so we can see here that the Enchanted Knight uses more of sorcery, here using Chiryoku, compared to the Prophet, where they use more mind, the Seishin Ryoku, they use more of like faith-based attacks. So here the Enchanted Knight, uh, the Majutsu Kishi, they are more likely here to get this boost, a lot of a big boost here with Chiryoku having almost double every other class's starting Chiryoku. And so in contrast to magic and sorcery, here we have Faith, Shinko, and this is the primary stat for the Prophet class. And so here your Shinko, your Faith, boosts your ability to do incantations. So that's the prophet's way of magic. And this is things like healing, spells, recovery, and all kinds of different stuff that the prophet uses. 
According to the wiki, incantations are a combination of both miracles and pyromancies in the previous Souls games. And the final stat we have here is Shimpy. This is Arcane. And so Arcane is a little bit more of a mysterious uh, stat here. It can boost all kinds of interesting things like your ability to get certain items whenever you defeat an enemy. And so it boosts your discovery skill. It also boosts your death resistance, some other sorceries and incantations as well. And so this attribute is quite a unique one. And so the class that gets the most shimpy, the most arcane here is the Yusha, the champion or the hero. They will fight, and they will die. So they were all the stats that you need to know in order to level up your character and improve yourself in different ways. And so in Elden Ring, there are an enormous amount of different weapons that you can find all around the world, whether you beat a boss or find it somewhere. And each weapon gives you a different play style. It gives you different range. It's useful in different situations against different monsters and different bosses. And so just learning what the categories are for each weapon will be quite useful for you to know because it's very unlikely that they're gonna say it in English. Uh, and so if you just see the category in Japanese, you'll be able to see, ah, I see, this is what category the weapon is. So the first category that we have of weapons in Elden Ring is the Tanken, the short sword. This is a combination of two kanji, tan, this is more short, small, and then ken, which hopefully you already recognize is a sword. So Tanken, a short sword. Then we have the straight sword, Chokken. This is another category of swords that you have in Elden Ring. And so Chok Ken here, the Chok part, is the kanji for straight, and then Ken for sword. So, literally, the straight sword. Tai Ken. Here is the great sword. So this is a much bigger sword here, and we have the kanji big here with Tai, and then Ken for sword. So the great sword, a very big sword. There's also a sword in Elden Ring that's a little bit more of a curved sword. And so here we have Kyok Ken. So here, the kyo part, the kyoku, kyo, this is the curved kanji, and then followed by ken for a sword. So as you can see, this ken kanji is super useful for you in this game. If you see that ken kanji, you know that's a sword. There's another type of sword in Elden Ring, and even some of the Dark Souls games as well. Here is katana, and this is also known as the katana in English because this is the kind of Japanese style sword. So this kanji can be read as katana and it also can be read as to when you see it used in a compound with other words. Um, but just katana is the word that you need to know for it by itself. Katana here is the kind of Japanese style sword. The next sword type that we have is a really cool one, kind of Darth Maul style. Uh, here we have Ryojin Ken. So Ryo is both, Jin is blades, Ken is sword. So it's a sword with blades on both sides, a double-edged sword. This is a little bit difficult of a kanji to read even for some Japanese people, but here, Ryojin Ken here is the double-edged sword. Another weapon type that you can have here is the hammer or the mallet, and that's known as Tsuchi here in Japanese. And so weapons like clubs would fall under this category of a hammer or a mallet. Tsuchi. Another really useful weapon here is Ono, an axe. And so this kanji right here is quite useful to remember uh, for an axe. If you actually have a look at it, you can kind of see the top kanji part, the radical, is actually for a father, and the bottom part you can kind of think of as the axe, so a father out in the back chopping wood <laughs> can maybe help you remember an axe. The next weapon type we have here is the Yari, the spear. This is a really common word that you'll see in any kind of fantasy, uh, you know, video game or book or anything like that. Often, you know, you have spear as a primary weapon. So this is a very useful word to learn, yari, for a spear. And now we have the great spear. So here is o yari. So this is a big spear, right? So this is kind of more of a lance, right? A really big one, right? O yari, a great spear. Another way you can attack people in Elden Ring is with a bow. Here, yumi. And this kanji is actually pretty easy to remember because it kind of looks like a bow, right? One of those twisted ones that, kind of those old twisted wooden ones. Uh, you can kind of picture this actually looking like a bow itself. So hopefully that helps you remember Yumi is a bow. Now, if you like magic, the weapon type that you're gonna to wanna to look out for here is Tsue. This is for a staff or a cane. 
this is actually a pretty useful word right here, even if you're not interested in fantasy games, because if you need a walking stick, <laughs> this is the kanji, this is the word right here. Uh, is what you need uh, in order to help yourself walk, right? But it's also the same in fantasy where you have a big staff, right? <laughs> like a you shall not pass type of staff here is a tsue. Another interesting weapon type that we have here in Elden Ring is the sacred seal. So this is a sein. So se here is kind of holy, sacred. And then the last part in, or also shirushi, this is the seal. These are the primary weapons used by the Prophet class to use incantations. Now finally moving on to more defensive things, we also have shields in this game. Now there are three different types of shields. The only ones we've seen so far in the beta or the um, network test are number one here, the Kodate, the small shield. So the first kanji here is for small and then the second kanji is for a shield. So Tate is for a shield with Ko for small, Put it together, hodate, a small shield. And so you might be able to guess what this next one is, chudate. This is a medium sized shield. So this kanji, the first one here is actually for medium. Uh, and this is really, really useful. If you order any kind of fast food, these kanji are pretty useful for you because you might order like a small French fries or a medium French fries. Uh, so these kanji are the same thing that you might see in that situation here used to talk about the size of a shield. Chu date, a standard shield. There's also one more type of shield uh, that's going to be an Elden Ring. However, that wasn't shown off in the network test, so I can't tell you what the Japanese is for it. <laughs> okay, so you know how to pick a class, how to level up those classes, and how to use weapons with that class. The next thing we have are abilities. So there are certain abilities that you need to use um, and unlock as you play this game. And so it's really useful to know what this is in Japanese. The first one here is Sengi. Now we've actually learnt both of these kanji even in this episode right now. Sen is for a battlefield. If you remember uh, Senki, um, the kind of demon wolf, the Okami no Senki, uh, the bloody wolf, the battle wolf. Sen is for battle. And then Gi here is for the technique. If you remember from the word Gidio, your dexterity, your amount of technique. So here Sengi is your battle techniques or known as your weapon skill. And so in Elden Ring, there are certain weapon skills that you can unlock with these things known as the Ashes of War. So here, Senhai, the Ashes of War. Again, Sen here for the battle, and then Hai here for an ash. So War Ash, in English known as the Ashes of War. And this is how you actually give your weapons certain abilities. And there are all kinds of different Senhai Ashes of War that you can apply to your weapons and it really gives a huge variety and difference in play style to help you kind of play exactly how you want, have different weapon abilities that you can transfer and put onto things. It's really interesting looking. Another ability that obviously is quite important is Majutsu, here for sorcery, as we've already referred to a few times in this video. Here is the Japanese word for sorcery or black magic. Majutsu. And we actually learnt this already in the word for the enchanted knight, Majutsu Kishi, the enchanted knight, the magical knight. But just used by itself, Majutsu is the magic. Kito here is prayer. So this, as opposed to the magic that the magician type classes use, Kito is the prayer, which is more used for the prophet. And so now we've learned most of the important stuff that you need to know in order to navigate and play Elden Ring, but there's still a few other kind of items and useful little tidbits that can help you on your journey. So, Taimatsu, a torch. In this game, as you explore the different areas of Elden Ring, there will be caves and dark areas that you need to explore and you won't be able to see anything, so you need a Taimatsu, a torch. Because this world is so big and all about exploration, you need a Chizu. A map. This is a super useful word uh, that's always used in almost any single video game. A chizu is the map. And I personally find it really helpful to remember this word as the first part chi is for land and then the second part just looks like a map with an x marks the spot on it, right? So it's the land map, it's the map of the land. And that's how I personally remember this word, chizu for a map x marks the spot. Now in Elden Ring you can traverse this beautiful land by horseback and the word for that here is kijo. So ki as we have actually learned in kishi for a knight 
This is someone who uses a horse, like a warrior who uses a horse. And then jaw here is a reading for the ride kanji. So you put it together, riding a horse. Kijo, horseback. Kagi, a key. This is really, 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 really important if you want to unlock that treasure chest that you found deep in the catacombs. You need to know this kanji, Kagi, for a key. Now, often you'll see this read in hiragana or even sometimes even katakana, but I have seen this used in Elden Ring as Kagi using this kanji. So it looks like a quite complicated kanji, but it's definitely something that you pick up over time and you see in different contexts. So don't forget, Kagi is key. There's also a crafting system in Elden Ring. As you traverse the lands, you pick up different items and you can actually use that to craft yourself weapons and all kinds of little things, just like kind of in the previous video with um, Pokemon Arceus. So here, the word for your crafting kit is quite important, Tsuru Kaban. So Tsuru, this is a tool, and then Kaban is the bag. So it's kind of like your tool bag, or in English, your crafting kit. This is what you need to know when you want to make things. So make sure you learn this. Uh, it is written in kanji, the kaban. So tsuru kaban is your crafting kit. Gen e here is the Japanese word for the phantoms or the illusions here in Elden Ring. So just like in a Dark Souls game, you'll sometimes see these kind of ghostly figures walking around and there are actually other players online and you can see as they die and walk around and things. And so this is the Japanese word for that, gen -e. Bloodstains are also making a return here in Elden Ring from the Dark Souls games. And so sometimes you'll see a stain of blood on the ground and if you touch it, you can actually see how other players died at that spot. So that's the bloodstain of their body. Now, interestingly enough, the word for bloodstain in Japanese is kekkon. Now, this is also the word for marriage in Japanese. So <laughs> quite a tricky little word here where we have a synonym of, uh, of reading here. Bloodstain and marriage have exactly the same way uh, of saying the word, kekkon. So in order to level up your character, you need to rest off at these sites of grace. And this, the grace, is shukufuku. So this kanji right here will show you that this is where the places are that you level up. So it's an interesting piece of language to learn here, shukufuku. And so these points of grace are really useful for you because not only do you level up your character, but you can also rest and heal up as well as replenish your chalice. And so the final word that you need to learn in order to play Elden Ring is chalice. And this item is used to replenish things like your health. And so you fill this up at the point of grace. And so the word for chalice in Japanese is seihaibin. So there you have around 40 or so of the most useful words for you to know in order to get into Elden Ring in Japanese. So this game looks absolutely incredible. I can't wait to get into this game. Uh, unfortunately, it doesn't have a Japanese dub. Why? <laughs> I really wish this game had a Japanese dub. It looks incredible either way because one good thing about playing a game with an English dub and Japanese subtitles is you can often kind of see how to say things that you know in English, see how to say it in Japanese. It's also a nice kind of a little bit of more of an entry thing that you can do. Maybe you're not ready to jump fully into a Japanese only environment. You still want to enjoy playing Elden Ring. You don't want to tarnish <laughs> the experience of you playing the game for the first time, but you still want to kind of play something in Japanese, then it's not a bad idea to switch it to the Japanese language setting, and then that will enable you to both enjoy it in English, but also immerse yourself in Japanese, reading it along, maybe looking up words as you play. So I think it's definitely still worthwhile playing this game in Japanese, definitely, uh, especially if you're into, you know, Dark Souls or anything like that. This game looks amazing. I think this year is the year for Breath of the Wild style games, <laughs> not to call this the kind of Breath of the Wild, but there are lots of games lately that have kind of been influenced by it a little bit, right? The new Pokemon game, very much like a Pokemon Breath of the Wild, and this new Dark Souls game Elden Ring, very much like a kind of Breath of the Wild Dark Souls. You know, you can go on a horse and travel around the world and find all these hidden little tunnels and places and explore and it looks absolutely incredible. Not only does the gameplay look beautiful, the music sounds amazing, voice acting is incredible. Obviously the gameplay is fantastic, but you also have the 
this just huge, deep, rich, interesting world to explore. So I think it looks like an absolutely fantastic game. I hope that in the future, come on from software, please, please give us Japanese dubs. <laughs> this game was never dubbed. None of those games, Dark Souls, are never dubbed in Japanese. Why? <laughs> uh, hopefully more games do. For some reason, the PS5 version of uh, Demon Souls actually did get a Japanese dub, as well as the DLC for Bloodborne. Not the original game, but the DLC got a Japanese voiceover patch. So uh, hopefully they keep going in that direction. Um, that's my personal wish. But either way, I'm super hyped for Elden Ring. I think it's going to be an amazing game. Very, very interesting. So I hope you guys all enjoy playing Elden Ring, whether in English or in Japanese. Hopefully some of these words stick into your head. They're really useful, not just for Elden Ring, but as well as many other games that you might play uh, and fantasy type of settings, as well as movies and things. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you very much, guys. As always, a huge thank you to all of the support us on Patreon for helping support the channel and keeping this channel going. Thank you so much, guys. I really do appreciate all of your help and support. As always, thank you very much for watching, guys, and I'll see you all in the next video. See ya. I command the